Okay, yeah. So with our two-hour delay schedule, if you have a class that begins and ends before 10 o'clock, it just won't meet because the campus won't even be open. Um, as far as early college, I don't know what they do. I, guess, I don't know if they follow what we do or, or what. But uh, yeah, so I forgot to cover that the first day because, uh, you know, it just slipped my mind. If you pull this up on your phone, you're just going to keep scrolling all the way down until you get to this, and then you'll be good to go. So make sure we got that covered. Uh, again, you know, since it, since it is a web-based class and we're not in a computer lab, if you don't have it today, you want to make sure that you bring a laptop or a tablet or something so that you can pull up Moodle and follow along while we're going. If you get here and you realize that your laptop or tablet is dead, if you sit along this side where Shay is or along the back, there is a power strip you can plug into back there and charge it while you're here. Uh, there's one over here too, but they're supposed to be switching out this board soon, so I left it available. All right, that's enough of that. <clears throat> uh, for everybody else uh, in the early college, just check the syllabus, walk through the attendance qu quiz, it'll walk you through everything. All right, I've got two videos uploaded for you to watch uh, when you're working on this. I got one from August 21st and I got one from yesterday uploaded. So you, if you miss something today while we're going through this, you can go back and watch this one or the one I'm recording right now. You can watch that one when it gets uploaded too. It should be up by like 10 or 11, I think. Um, upload speeds vary. Y'all know that. All right, so click on this first, 143 conversion notes. Go ahead and pull that up that right there all right I'm gonna pull up my downloaded copy because you know like the textbook I don't want 15 of them in my download folder well I may have to because it's not in my download folder nothing is working the way I want it to this morning we're having a Monday on a Thursday all right so when you pull it up you know you can change its aspect ratio to be able to see it however you want to all right so <clears throat> Conversions in the book. If, uh, if you're going to pull the book up, it's in chapter 2, particularly section 2A. Uh, one thing that we mentioned on the first day is, uh, you know, the textbook is there, but at this point, since I've been doing this class this many times now, um, most of the stuff that you need is in the Moodle course. Uh, you can check the textbook if you want to, uh, but, you know, we don't, we don't use it too very often. Uh, so speaking of the textbook, one of the things that we do use is there is a chart on page 78 in the textbook. Uh, if you didn't want to pull up the textbook file, I've got it embedded in Moodle because when we first started doing this last January, before I had the digital copy of the book, so there were some folks that didn't have the textbook yet because it's 10 years old now and it's hard to find. Um, so. We had, I just, you know, they needed it for the lab, so I just had to put it in there. All right, let's talk about the unit fraction. So the unit fraction is what we use to move between units of measurement. I really wish I'd get that door fixed out there. This is, sounds like someone dumping trash out every time it opens. All right, so the unit fraction. What, what it is, it's a table that we use to move out of one unit into another unit. You've probably seen it before. Um, I know some chemistry teachers use it a lot because it helps you get out of stuff. But <clears throat> the way it works is, say you're given a question that says, how many ounces are in 7.8 pounds? Or it'll just say 7.8 pounds into so many ounces. So you start by just recopying what you've got here into the first column of your unit fraction. Now, this one is just a unit. It's not a rate. We'll talk about rates in a minute. Uh, so since it's just a unit, just go ahead and make that in your first column here. Leave the bottom underneath it blank. It's not a rate. It's not like pounds per square inch or anything. So there's not going to be anything underneath there. Now, the whole point of the unit fraction, again, is to get out of one unit and into another unit. So we're trying to get to ounces, right? That's the one that we're trying to get to. So, what we do then, let's say that, I mean, is there anybody in here that did not know that there are 16 ounces in a pound? Good. 
But, you know, just for argument's sake, let's say you didn't, all right? So you'll go back to the Moodle course and you're going to pull up this conversion chart right here, all right? So that conversion chart has everything you could need for pretty much all of these problems. Now, some of them you do have to use a textbook one, but since it says pounds to ounces, we want to try to find the one that says one pound into however many ounces. It's located right here, all right, over in weight and mass. So one pound is 16 ounces. But again, you know, uh, pretty much everybody knows that one. That's an easy one to remember. It's not fractional or anything. It doesn't have any decimal places, so it's good to, good to use. Now, <clears throat> so we're back over here. The one that you're trying to get out of goes diagonal to the uh, one you had. So you've got 7.8 pounds. You're trying to get out of it. So 7.8 pounds here, one pound there. That way you can cancel them out. Remember when you were factoring fractions to try to reduce them and they told you that if you have the same thing in the top and the bottom you can mark it out. That's what lets you do this. If you have a pound in the top, pound in the bottom, you can just mark it out. All right. So what went above this was the 16 ounces. Now the 16 ounces, ounces is what we're looking for. When the desired unit is in the top, you stop. That means that you don't have to add any more columns to this. You're good. Now you still have to put everything together to figure out what the new number is. So everything that is not a one has to be brought over. All right, everything that's not a one, you have to bring it over. If it is a one, you can or you can leave it behind. It's not gonna affect it. Um, <clears throat> uh, so 7.8 times 16 is what we ultimately have and we're left with 124.8 ounces. Sorry for the handwriting on this. Uh, I could blame the copier, but no, it's just, it's just my handwriting. Uh, now, I've got a note down here that says to try to have as many ones in the bottom if possible, because that means the, the more ones in the bottom that you have, the less dividing you're gonna have to do. Now, that being said, there are some where you're gonna have to divide, but if you can have as many, as, as few ones in the bottom as possible, you'll be good. Um, so, yeah, that's about as easy as a unit fraction gets. We're going to look at a, uh, several more because, you know, I'm not one of those uh, math teachers that says, all right, here's one example. Everybody got it? Good. Because that's just stupid. I don't know why people think that that's okay. All right, so here's another interesting scenario. We've got 21 feet into meters. Now, something we didn't talk about with this previous one, both of these units, pounds and ounces, they're what used to be called standard units. They, go, they went away from calling them standard units, I think, because you know when you, when you call something the standard, that means everybody's using it, right? Everybody don't use it. We're the only ones that do. Everybody else uses metric, so that, you know, it got really confusing. So then they called it American, then they called it U.S., and then U.S. customary. So it's had like so many different names, but if you just want to call it not metric, you'll be good. But this problem here, 21 feet to meters. This is moving between the two systems. We got one that's in US and one that's in metric. There's two ways to go about this and still pretty much be okay. So let's do it this way first. Let me zoom this in a little bit. All right. So 21 feet is how many meters? Well, again, start your unit conversion or unit conversion, unit fraction, tomato, tomato. Um, 21 feet goes in first. It's not a rate, so there's not going to be anything below it. You're trying to get out of feet, all right? So if you're trying to have one foot in the bottom of your chart, you're going to be looking right here where it says one foot, and then you're going to find where it says 0 .305 meters, all right? So that's the conversion you're going to use for this one. One foot is 0 .305 meters. So the one foot will go in the bottom so that you can cancel out and then 0 0.305 meters. Meters is what we were looking for. All right. So you don't have to take that out any farther. Just go ahead and clean it up. 21 times 0 0.305, 6.405 meters and you're done.
right? Now, a couple of things. One, and I've got this several places in the notes. You'll hear me say it several times on the recording. And inevitably, someone that didn't see it in the notes or didn't watch this recording will send me this message saying 6.405 was not listed on the answer choices in Moodle. And I'll say, and no, it probably wasn't because that chart I just used was not made by the company that made the questions. So what you'll have to do is just, you know, pick the one that's the closest to it. It might not say 6.405. It might say 6.41. It might say 6.4. It might have a digit after the 5. Just pick the ones closest and you'll be okay. All right, so there's that. Now the next thing I want to talk about was let's say that when you're doing these, you had a really hard time trying to find one foot equals 0.305 meters. So much so that that's not the one that you used. Let's say instead of finding one foot was 0.305 meters, let's say that you found the other one, which is one meter is 3.281 feet. You can use that. You don't have to use one foot equals 0.305 meters, but if you use this one, it's going to look a little different. For instance, you still have to put the feet in the bottom. Okay? Uh, just because the meter has the one, that doesn't mean that you can put it in the bottom because you're still trying to cancel the feet out. So the 3.281 has to go in the bottom this time. The one will go in the top. So on the previous one, when we multiplied, that's going to be different now because we actually do have a number in the bottom and you're going to have to divide. So when you take 21 and divide it by 3.281, you get 6.4005 meters. So if you're comparing the two to see how they looked, ah, it's a difference of a ten thousandth, basically. You got an extra zero in there. So the difference is negligible, but again, you know, given that Moodle used a different table, neither one of these might be in there. It might be something just close. It might not even be 6.4 something. It might say something like 6.389 or something like that. You get the idea. I mean, you, we've all had to take these state tests before where uh, you work it out, you get a good answer, then you look and it's not on there. So you just pick the one that's closest and you'll be okay. I mean, shoot, that's how I got my teaching license. We had to take a test for that and I was working through it. I got the answers and I was like, no, <laughs> none of these are in here. So I just picked the closest one and I was four points away from making a perfect score. So it works. There's ways to get by. And again, same thing that I've got here. All right, the chart in Moodle is not produced by the book company or the question maker company that has the book file, so the answers won't be exact. All right. A couple of uncommon units. <clears throat> um, nautical miles, that is in the snip of the digital book that I've got here. So nautical mile and all that. Uh, stuff over here is better in, if you look in the book. All right. And I had in there that a knot was the same thing. It's not. It's different. I mean, I'm not a sailor. I don't know why I put that in there. So just ignore that. I think you really only got one question on your lab about this anyway. So just use the textbook chart. You'll be better off. I just haven't updated my notes in two years. Barrels. Okay. We're going to use this to start talking about the three main areas where people have issues with the lab. We already talked about the first one, right? They don't watch the video or they don't read the notes and realize that, yeah, the conversion chart is good, but it's going to skew your answers a little bit. The second area, barrel questions. You have about either, it's either two or four questions on your lab about uh, how many gallons in a barrel and whatnot. On the book chart, there are two different kinds of barrels. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's, do, let's make, zoom that in a little bit. Yeah, let's go to a new window. All right. So, okay. This isn't working. 
There we go. All right. Got to use a different tool. Well, I can't get this any bigger. But down here, we've got two barrels. You've got a barrel of petroleum and a barrel of liquid. Basically, anything that says it is non-petroleum or non-oil, that's the one that you use. Now look, a petroleum barrel is bigger, according to this table, by 11 gallons, right? Uh, I guess at the time they were putting more value on petroleum than they were things like, I don't know, water. But anyway, where people mess up is they look at the question and it says they just see the barrels part. They go to the table and since the petroleum one is listed before the other one, they use that one for everything. And when I go back and grade these, when I've gone, went back and graded them in years past, that is the mistake they all make. They use the wrong barrel. So just make sure that you read it very carefully. There are two different size barrels. All right. That's the second most common mistake that is made uh, on this lap. Okay, and I've even got it in here and it's on the table. Okay, a dual unit conversion, or you could also call this a rate conversion. All right. I wouldn't call it difficult. It's just got a little bit more to it than your regular unit conversions. So I'm going to put these two examples on the board and do them uh, as, as we go so that you can see them a little better. All right, let me move this. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So the first one we have says 98 kilometers per hour and they want it in miles per hour because you got two different kinds of unit conversions. So <clears throat> start by setting up your unit fraction. 98 kilometers now this time, since it's a rate, you're going to have something in the bottom. So put your one hour in the bottom. Because when it's written like that, or like when they say miles per hour, kilometers per hour, feet per second, pounds per square inch, they're meaning this many pounds divided by this many square inches, or this many kilometers divided by this many hours. You get the idea. Now, with a rate conversion, the trick to it is Take care of your top unit first. Then, if necessary, come back and get the bottom one. Sometimes you have to come back and get the bottom one. Sometimes you don't. Let's see which one this one is. All right. So, kilometers into miles. So, let's go to the conversion chart. Now, I'm sure the textbook gives a different one. But we'll just use this one here. So, I'm going to, I'm going to try to put... A, a one in the bottom. That's the, that's the just me talking. That's what I always try to do is put my one in the bottom. So one kilometer, according to the conversion chart, is what does that say? 0 0.621. All right, 0 0.621 miles. So again, the reason why we do this is so we can get out of kilometers and get into miles. And when the one that you're looking for is in the top, you stop with that one. Now, since this is a rate, that's, that doesn't mean that you just stop all together. You've got to come back and check on the hours. All right. Now, luckily with this one, both of these were over hours. Okay. So that means this is okay. We can leave it. We don't have to mess with it. All right because it's already in the bottom, right? When you've got the right top unit over the right bottom unit, then you are officially done with this one. So this is going to be 98 times 0.621. If you want to bring the one over, you can, but you don't have to, but you have to bring the hours over. You want to make sure that you bring that. So that is going to come out to be, let me switch that back. Sixty point eight six miles per hour. Which we wouldn't we wouldn't write it that way. Oops. We would put 
like this, right? Miles per hour or with a slash, there you go. Yeah, so that one wasn't that bad. So when you have a, a uh, rate in the bottom, if they both have the same rate in the bottom, you don't have to adjust it. However, with this next one, we're going to have to change them both because we're going from miles per hour into feet per second, okay? So this one's going to be a little different. Start with your 60 miles per hour. So 60 miles in the top and your one hour in the bottom, all right? Now, take care of your top unit first. Don't worry about the bottom one until you're done with the top one. So we're going miles into feet. Hopefully everybody knows that one. If you don't, you can check the chart. But one mile is 5,280 feet, right? So we got feet, we're out of miles. All right, so now we have to come back and deal with the hours because we got to turn them into seconds. So what I do to move this, because you're going to need to move it in the top so that your seconds wind up in the bottom. I just recopied it, right? I just recopied it because what that also does is it lets you cancel it out, all right? Now you can start adjusting it for seconds. So one hour we know is 60 minutes. And we know that one minute is 60 seconds. So we got seconds. We've got feet per second from when we started with miles per hour. All right. Anybody need me to walk back through that one before we solve it? Started with miles per hour, took care of the miles first, then came back and got the hours and turned it into seconds. That one's about as bad of a one as you're going to have. It's, it's pretty involved. Okay, so this is a big old mess, right? Slashes everywhere, units we don't need. So let's clean it up. Copy everything in the top over and everything in the bottom over. If you want to bring your ones over, bring your ones over. You don't have to. So the top is going to say 60 times 5,280. And then the bottom, we'll say 60 times 60. Now we mentioned how the whole reason we're able to cancel the units out is because we have the same one in the top and bottom, right? Well, we've got this still factored for now. Is there anything in the top and bottom we can lay out of that one? Or cancel out, rather? Right, I heard, I heard it whispered softly. Yeah, there's a set of 60s that you can cross out. Yeah. You know the confident answer or the 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 non-confident answers that are correct are always whispered. They are. Like, I think it's 60. And I just want to go, I think you're right. But then I'll have to go to HR and then it's a whole thing. So uh, that's why I don't whisper to people. So now go ahead and divide 5,280 by 60, and you'll come out with 88 feet per second. So those of you that know any, anyone that plays airsoft, if they ever want to pelt anybody with a rubber pellet that would equate to 60 miles an hour, tell them they need 88 feet per second. This is an old marker. It is really, really strong. <laughs> All right. Any questions about a rate conversion? Take care of the top unit first. Come back and get the bottom one. All right. Everybody kind of clear on that? I don't think you're going to have too many of those, but if, if you have, if one pops up, you'll be good to go. All right? Now, other things that are included in the first conversions part. We've got some formulas for temperature. Moving between Fahrenheit and Celsius, and then uh, all of that stuff is on the conversion chart. It's over here in the bottom right corner where it says temperature formulas. And they're pretty much just opposites of each other or inverse operations of each other. One thing to note though, you don't want to use the wrong formula depending on what you're looking for. So like let's say you are given Fahrenheit, that's the one you want to use right here. This is if you are given Fahrenheit, 
okay? Because you'll have to put it in the parentheses and then do order of operations there. If you're given Celsius, that's F equals, all right? So if you're given Celsius, that's F equals. Some places use 9 fifths instead of 1.8, but I would use the 1.8 because it's a little bit cleaner. Fractions are messy, y'all know that. All right. And then we'll talk about the uh, Kelvin uh, conversions here in a little bit because there are some of those as well. Just make sure that you know if you're looking for Celsius, they're going to give you Fahrenheit. If you're looking for Fahrenheit, they're going to give you Celsius. Or in other cases, they'll give you Kelvin. Just make sure you know what formula that is. All right. Unit rate. This is the third most missed question on this. So make sure that we know how to set this up. Unit rate is used for best price scenarios. I mean, you've, all, you've probably all gone grocery shopping or comparison shopping at least, and you're looking at you know, how much you're paying for a certain set of an item and you want to make sure that you're paying the least amount for each one. That's what a unit rate is. Nine times out of ten, it's price per item. Uh, speeds, miles per hour, feet per second, kilometers per hour, those are also technically unit rates because they've got a one in the bottom. But we use it for price, okay? And the questions that you're going to see look like this, okay? They're going to say an eight-ounce bottle uh, of... I don't know, something, costs $2.16, what's the price per ounce, okay? It's not always going to say what's the price per ounce, but the thing that you need to know for every unit rate problem, the price always goes on the top. The price always goes on the top. And since you have to have a denominator of one to, for it to be classified as a unit rate, that means you just divide it. Divide top by bottom. Okay? Where people run afoul of these is they see eight ounce, $2.16, and that's how they write it. And that's why they miss it. Um, because they know that to divide, you have to have it in order. Well, the order is not going to be given to you on these. They, they're tricking you to see if you know how to set up a unit price. So price in the top, unit in the bottom. Sometimes it's ounces. Sometimes it'll be bottles or you know, other things. So just make sure you read the question carefully. But yeah, in this scenario, it's 27 cents per ounce. Now, the full part of this question would say, which one is the best price? An eight ounce bottle for $2.16 or a, a 10 ounce bottle for $2.30, something like that. Uh, so you'll just do them both the same way, and then it just becomes which one's bigger. Or which one's, uh, sorry, not bigger, which one's uh, smaller. The one you want to pick is the one that's smaller. The reason why I said bigger is because that's the other mistake people make with these. They see best price and they think biggest price. It's not the case. All right. And we'll look at some more of these here in a bit. All right. Kelvin. So Kelvin is like, a, it's pretty much a science unit. But they've got it incorporated in here, so we'll use it. Uh, it basically operates the same as Celsius, except it's got a different zero point. Uh, zero in Kelvin is negative 273.5, in Celsius. Because, you know, Celsius uses zero to 100 for their freezing and boiling. Uh, Fahrenheit is 32 and 212. Uh, so Kelvin is negative 273.15. <clears throat> in Celsius. Zero Kelvin is called absolute zero, point at which all molecular movement stops. All right, here are your formulas. I'll just let you make a note of where to find those, or if you want to jot them down, you can get that done too. Uh, just make sure that you know which one is which. This one is for Celsius to Kelvin, so that means that Celsius was given. They're looking for Kelvin. Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Fahrenheit was given. They're looking for Kelvin. And then the same thing with these last two is if Kelvin was given. Uh, converting money, we're not going to worry about that until next week with Conversions Lab 2 because we're not going to be seeing any of that on Conversions Lab 1. All right. So, any questions about something on the notes that we went through, if I went through it too quick? Yes? Uh, 
it's really up to you. Um, um, so when I t I've got Math 110 classes also, and when they did this formula, this one said 9 fifths C plus 32. 9 fifths equates to 1.8. So really, if you want to use that, sure. It shouldn't change it too much. I can't remember if it comes out to be exactly 1.8. It might have some change after the eight, um, but yeah, it's really up to you, whatever you think. Uh, let me see, what did it say? Oh, uh, hmm. the only time that would cause a problem is with this one right here because it says five ninths instead of nine fifths. I would say with this one, 1 1.8 would be fine. You, just, you can swap that one out for 1 1.8, but with Fahrenheit to Kelvin, I think I'd either leave it as five ninths or convert to five ninths to a uh, decimal. Just be, be wary. Um, there, used to, there was this old rule, anytime that you divided, I think it said, Anytime you divide it by three or nine, you're going to get a repeating decimal. So just be aware of that. But the good thing is, these scientific calculators take care of fractions like that. So, easy peasy. All right, any other questions about the notes? All right. Go back to the Moodle page. <clears throat> Let me zoom this back out. Okay. All right. Now, below the book chart are a lot of worked examples from previous years uh, when we were in the old room. So you can go back and look through these. Uh, they're pretty much the same ones that we got in the notes. I just worked them out in real time so that you can see them differently. Uh, we did some more stuff with, here are the two rate conversions. And so here is an example of the unit rate problem. So let me pull that up real quick. Yes, new window. Okay, so comparing unit rates. Oh, God, what happened there? All right, let's do that. All right. So, this was a question that said something like $5.50 for seven apples compared to $4.50 for five apples. So, what you do, you take the price and you divide it by the quantity. It's always price over quantity. And then what happened was, when you look at it, this one had a lower price per quantity. Yeah, you're paying more money, but you're also getting more apples. So that's, that's kind of how that one worked out. That's why people buy in bulk, right? You're getting, you're getting more uh, at a lower rate. So just be aware of that. Price always goes in the top. If you ever get stuck on those, just remember, price goes in the top. Here's some stuff with some different units that we wound up not using anymore. So you can look at that or skip it. It won't, it won't hurt you none. Here's some more um, Fahrenheit and Kelvin stuff. It's a little bit more organized in the notes, though. This is kind of messy. I think we were probably running out of time that day. Uh, the money stuff, don't worry about that till the conversion to lab two. Here's some more uh, unit rate stuff uh, and it's like uh, conversions and things like that. Uh, yeah, I can skip that. Yeah, here's more money conversions. We'll worry about that next week. Uh, yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> the work, or your, not, not your work, uh, the assignment is all the way down at the bottom. Before you open this, though, what you want to make sure that you do is go here where it says Conversions Lab 1 Student Copy and click on that. All right. Oh, shoot, I've been on the wrong screen the whole time. There we go. I told them I needed a TA just to run my video equipment, but they're like, no, we ain't got no money for that. Like, okay, fine. I'll just mess up the videos and then we'll see who's right. Okay. The student copy. So let's walk through this. Now, the thing to remember, notice how number one on this one says the baby weighs 7.8 pounds. How many ounces is that? Okay. If you go to the answer entry and pull it up, it scrambles it. See how it doesn't match? So what you do is go through the student copy 
work out all the questions. Get your answers, okay? Then, when you pull up the answer entry, if the first one says, turn negative 35 degrees Celsius into Fahrenheit, go back to your student copy, find where you worked that one out, get your answer and put it in. This is to prevent someone from just giving their student copy to somebody else to let them get their answers, because their answers are gonna be in a different order, so then I'll know if somebody was up to no good. But nobody in here would ever do that, would they? The correct answer is no. No, we would not. All right, so just be aware of that, all right? It's not gonna match up and that's by design. So the first five, you're just hopping between uh, units on some of these. Some of them it's the same, some of them it's not. So number one, pounds to ounces. Number two, uh, gallons to fluid ounces. Three, you've got a rate, you got miles per hour into nautical miles per hour. So for that one, you're gonna have to go back to the book uh, chart and use that. All right, <clears throat> four and five, okay. The barrels, okay. One is a barrel of petroleum, one is a barrel of water. Again, I cannot stress this enough. On the book chart, there are two different barrel sizes. Okay, make sure that you use the right one. Inevitably, somebody that didn't watch the video or didn't read the notes is going to send me a message that says, I think the barrel question, it's always, I think the barrel questions are messed up. That's what it is. They don't think that they got it, they just got it wrong. It's like, I think this problem's messed up. I'm like, no, I think you missed it. I mean, I've heard it all at this point, guys. I've been teaching for nearly 20 years. <clears throat> um, all right. Feet to meters, kilometers to yards, liters to gallons, cubic inches. Okay, cubic inches. This one's tricky, all right? You're gonna have to use both charts on this one. So cubic inches is over here on the book chart underneath where it says dry measures, okay? So cubic inches, oh God, this thing's so sensitive. Cubic inches converts to cubic centimeters. So you get the cubic centimeters off of this chart, then you go to the conversion chart to get your milliliters here. All right, the cubic centimeters is underneath the medical application section. All right, so the question said cubic inches to milliliters. So textbook chart, get your cubic centimeters, regular conversion chart, and it's a one-to-one -one for milliliters. So you'll be good. All right, I'm just trying to think of any other fires that might pop up. Uh, pounds to grams, kilometers per hour, we, we got that taken care of. Okay, 12 and 13 switches gears into temperatures. So remember, the one that they give you is, you know, not the formula that you use. So if they give you Fahrenheit, you're not going to use F equals. If they give you Fahrenheit, you're going to use one that has the F equals in the formula, depending on if they're looking for Celsius or Kelvin. <sighs> yeah, so just make sure you know what they're looking for. Okay, 18, 19, and 20. 18, you can buy a hair, you can buy hair product in an eight ounce bottle for $2.16 or in a six, bottle for, six ounce bottle for 150. So again, both of these, or actually all three of these, you're gonna set this up as price over quantity. You just got to make sure that you know what the quantity is. On 18 and 19, the quantity is ounces. All right, on 18 and 19, it's going to be price per ounce. 20 is different. 20 tells you you've got five 10 ounce bottles and seven 14 ounce bottles. If you're still going to keep it in terms of price per ounce, you've got to convert that. Five times 10 and seven times 14. But the easiest thing to do is just to do price per bottle, All right? So make sure that you set that up. Uh, I mean, inevitably somebody will set this up upside down and when they do that, it causes them to miss all three because they do all three the same way. So just make sure that you know price over quantity, All right? So this is due on the 16th. Now what that means is <clears throat> I set all my due dates if I can manage it, which I think I've got them all set up okay this semester. But I set all my due dates, if you look at it, it tells you what time that it's due. Okay, 
So it's due January the 16th at 11.59. When I put it in, it says 11.59.59 p.m. What that means is if you don't turn it in until 12.00.00 a.m., then it's late. Also, let's, I mean, we saw that this has like 20 questions, right? Should take you about 30, 45 minutes, okay? So let's say it takes you 30 minutes to do it, but you didn't start it until 11.45 the night it was due. If you're still working on it and you haven't turned it in, it will auto submit. It's like if you opened it, started putting, you know, started putting them in as you went, and you didn't get them all entered by the deadline, it'll go ahead and turn it in for you. So in other words, make sure that you don't wait until the night it's due to turn it in. We're not going to do that, are we? Yeah. Uh, again, going back to grading real quick for some of you that weren't here on the first day. <clears throat> ah, shoot. Where is it at? Let me go to the syllabus. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -ba. One thing I do want to highlight in the syllabus just real fast. You, I mean, you can check the rest of this information out uh, on your own. All right, so grading and attendance. Okay, again, I use a points-based system, which means that what you turn in is what you get. If you don't turn it in, you get zero points. If you do turn it in, I grade it and you get what you get. If you're going to try to get an A, you got to get at least 1,800 total points. Think of the grade, the letter grades as ranges, okay? Because when we enter them in, we just put in the letters. So a 90 counts the same as a 97, all right? So if you want to get in the A range, you got to get at least 1,800 total points. If you get this grade, a D, like say if, you, if the amount of points that you got was between 1,200 and 1,399, you get a D for the course, which means in Tri-County's eyes, you did pass it, but if you're trying to go somewhere else, you didn't. It will not transfer. If you want it to transfer, you got to get at least a C. All right? There's a reason why they say C's get degrees. And then an F, well, I mean, you know what that means. Now, I try not to let too many folks get to an F. All right? If you start trailing behind, then you fall into the attendance category where, where I drop you. All right? Students who do not complete the attendance quiz miss more than two class meetings. Okay, now I didn't take attendance on Monday because I know the early college didn't start yet and everybody's still trying to find a room, so don't worry about that. But after today, if you miss more than two class meetings, do not complete the attendance quiz, consecutively miss 10% of your assignments, which would be three, or cumulatively miss 20% of your assignments, which would be six, you will be administratively withdrawn from the course and receive a grade of a U, which means that I failed you. I just didn't wait till the end of the year to do it. All right? So if you find yourself falling behind for whatever reason, maybe you got hurt, maybe you got sick, maybe somebody got sick, uh, maybe you got thrown in jail. I've had that happen. <laughs> then maybe it's like, well, you know what? I mean, if you're in jail, you obviously can't withdraw yourself from a course because you can't get to a computer. But still, if something comes up and you know that you're not going to be able to finish out the class, take yourself out of it. Okay? There is a last date to withdraw. As that approaches, I will let people know. Um, you know, some folks not tell us, like, you know, hey, last date of withdrawal is coming up. Uh, but <clears throat> just make sure that you don't, you know, fall behind. Also, I have had folks in the past that chronically turned things in late, like they had no clue what a deadline was, and they just turned it in whenever they could. So they were constantly 20 points behind what they needed to be. Try not to let that happen. Okay, I know stuff pops up from time to time, but if you're just chronically turning stuff late in, it's a you problem, not a me problem. All right. So just make sure that you know that. Uh, keep, you know, keep up with your due dates, turn stuff in on time, come to class, everything will be right as rain. I mean, you, uh, you'll, the way this is set up this semester is, uh, I mean, you're really going to have to put in the effort to not get credit for it. I try to do all my classes that way. I try to set you up to succeed, not set you up to fail. All right, any other questions? All right, you early college folks, good to meet you if I didn't already know you. I can't guarantee that I'll know your names by next Tuesday. In fact, I would guarantee that I would not know your names by next Tuesday, but I'll work on it, okay? <clears throat> so make sure that you work on